Hey class, Mr. G here going over what we're going to be covering in surface design this term. All right, so each at the beginning of each term, I like to have a like a layout of different forms from for all my classes. Uh, we have uh, the syllabus, we have the project list, we have media release forms, we have um, profile sheets, uh, surveys, sheets. There's like five other forms that I do the first week of class, first couple days, uh, to get a handle on what you guys gotta know, what you guys need to study, and then all my teacher friends uh, for what would help you in your classroom. This is stuff that helps me. Um, this might help you, and if it does, please uh, please let me know. I always like to know if I'm, if I'm helping you guys out. Um, but today's, th what we're gonna be covering is the project list, the things that you're gonna be required to take care of during class time. All right, now, when I print these off, I have to print them off in two sheets, so they're two sheets. If you can do them back to back, better for you. Uh, my printer doesn't do that for some reason. Um, or the copier. Copy machine doesn't do backwards copies anymore. I don't know. I think somebody got angry with it. So the the overall units, the units that we have that I cover in my services on class is sketchbook, lettering, and then story design. Um, now for this, the overall theme, just giving you those three things again, uh, a sketchbook, lettering, and storybook design, fantasy and fairy tales really play well to this. And it's just one of those things where those stories are already written, so I'm not gonna you know, break my brain trying to come up with some new stuff. Uh, now with this said, service design is one of those classes where I mix up different stuff. So what I have on the project list is open-ended and sometimes I'll modify some of the projects that I do when I always tell my class this, but this is just kind of a gauge to the pathway of how they're gonna move forward in their projects. Um, first and foremost is the art history because the art history is one of those topics that really no one wants to do, let alone uh, it also fails most of my students. Uh, and the reason that is is because we do it once a week. And for that art history assignment, it's a one-page write-up that we do in class. It covers three different sections, which is description, interpretation, and judgment. So what do you see? Why do you, what do you think about? Do you like it or not like it? And then why do you think the artist made those decisions? And in class, it's an open-ended discussion. It's a piece of artwork where we're, we're analyzing the artwork, why the artwork was made, going into historical aspects of it as well as um, creative aspects of it. And it gives an open-ended discussion, which makes the writing process a lot easier for my class. However, at the same time, each of those sections is 100 points a piece, so it's 300 points for one day of work. Now, if you miss one section, that gives you 200 out of 300 points, which averages out to 66%, and you fail. So, so, I always like to make sure that my students are aware that you need to take care of all three sections to make sure that your grade is uh, top notch and on par with what you want. Uh, so, uh, the art history is just one of those imperative things. Now, on the other sheet of the project list, I'll show you that real quick so you guys can see what we do. Uh, as I print it off, it's just a large grid sheet, and this is a just for you to understand what is due, when it's due, and and what you got, what you have left to it complete. So for this we have, um, you have the project section up here, which is the how many projects that we got to get done, and then the the list down here for weeks, which is the weeks that of our history. Now at the top, on the top bar up here, it does the following, which is the pre-design, the sketchbook, the build, the creative additions, the assignments, due date, and the art history section. And art history's got one, two, three, so you can do three checks for each section that you did get completed. Now, if you didn't complete something, you know already what you got to get done to make sure that your grade is as high as it possibly can be. Uh, make sure that you're taking care of those things on time in a timely manner because, you know, how I grade, you know, want to get stuff done because... Grading is like the one thing I really don't care for. It's just, it's paperwork. I don't like paperwork. So starting off with the sketchbook. Sketchbook is the first unit that we're working on. In the sketchbook, big thing that we have to cover is elements of art and principles of design. Sometimes it's the elements and principles of art. However, it's really the same thing. They all mean the same thing. It's a list of terms as to that, that, that dissect and break down art to its basic elements and basic principles on how the stuff works together. See how I used the words there? They, they made sense. Um, so for the sketchbook section, you need to have a sketchbook for class because this is an ongoing piece of work that, that you're gonna need to cover stuff in there. Uh, you don't have to buy the expensive uh, brand like this. This is beautiful, I love this, it's nice and big, it's thick, uh, spiral bound on it and, uh, and it holds up like, 
I like that because you can write like I've had I've had students who'll stand and write and do their design work while they're standing or walking around. I have a kind of a different classroom to where that's an okay thing. Um, I know some teachers don't, so teach his own. We can also do a make your own sketchbook section where you're actually going to be creating the spine. It's book binding, book building, uh, where they're actually creating the uh, the pages inside, creating the structure of the book, binding it themselves uh, as another project. And that goes into that section where they're actually making those elements. Um, it's a great project, so if you want to do that instead of actually having to go out and buy sketchbooks, you can do that. I prefer both because uh, sometimes the bought sketchbook is more conducive to what they're building, what they're working on, uh, and the personalized sketchbook goes more towards the story building section at the end, uh, where they're actually creating their own um, fairy tales, nursery rhymes structure in that book as we move on through. So it's a it's a twofold project. It doesn't just complete one project; it completes a, a few projects. So it's an ongoing piece that is continually worked on. Now, as they're doing that, we're moving into the um, the next stage, which is lettering. Uh, for lettering, we have bought calligraphy pens that I have class sets of where they're actually picking out different nibs, which is this thing, then attaching it to the calligraphy pen handle and dipping into ink and we've got different inks. I also have a, um, we don't have just black ink. We also have, um, I forgot the term. It's like a luminescence, like, it's a luminescent ink. No, iridescent. It's iridescent ink. Um, Doc Martens. It's uh, expensive stuff. They come in like these little, let me show you. Come in these little vials like this. Nice screw on lid, little stopper. Um, inks that the, that the students will be using to, uh, for, for the calligraphy pens. I do have black India ink. I do have Speedball brand. Um, if that's a ma if that matters to you, personally, I'll be honest. I got like five different varieties one year. Um, I think it was a conference where you got to test some stuff out. Hang on. Different varieties where you got to test stuff out. I preferred the uh, Blick, not sponsored, just my preference. Uh, the Blick brand ink because it was the most 50/50 uh, like liquidy to. Um, like charcoal black, like ink substance. And I preferred that to some of the other ones because some of the other ones are either watered down or they were like straight, like chemical oily ink. And in a classroom setting, that's a lot harder to work with those two things. If it's really liquidy, you're using way too much and you're, and it's hard for the kid, for the kids to get that design work down that letter down just right. And if it's too oily, um, that gets on something it ain't coming out ever and you just got to cut it out so that's that was just no we're not doing that um but the uh the blick is really good because it's like a 50 50 nice even it's like the perfect balance it's not too watered down it's not too overly saturated so i like it the best now if we're going to learn how these calligraphy pens work we're not just going to use them we're also going to make them and uh, so these ones that I made, I got another video on the channel. I think it's like uh, Seb Lester helped me out here. He didn't personally help me out, but I just kind of riffed off of some of his stuff. Um, where we took a chopstick and a soda can and cut the metal out and made our own uh, calligraphy pens. I uh, recommend that you check that out. It's a good tool. Good, uh, good, it's a good video. Uh, so for that, once you get into lettering and you've created your tools to work with. Uh, we're going to start working on alphabets. Now, when we do alphabets in here, we do different varieties where we're working on um, manila paper first because this stuff is the is the cheap stuff that uh, I'm okay with, like just kind of blasting through an entire pack um, to get down the letter structure, letter designs, uh, practicing larger sections where you're actually setting out lines and you're trying to keep that spacing right, trying to get that structure just right to where then we'll get the white paper, make a nice alphabet design on it to creating different panels and pages where you're adding your own personal quote and then coming up with a cool uh, coloring design that you're gonna watercolor around that. I like doing this because then it forces a student to understand two different things. One, how this medium works, so how the ink, once it's saturated into the paper, it does not move. And then to use watercolor to finish off the design, so you got two different mediums and, work, and seeing how those things evolve uh, over time and what they can do. Now, as we do that, and that's leading us into the story storyboard 
creation and story art. Students receive uh, from me a copy of the storyboard itself, which is um, a write-up on who the characters are, where is the story going to take place, as well as a series of boxes and another panel that goes over the same thing uh, so that they can hash out what's going where, where's the middle ground, where's the background, where's the foreground, so getting perspective in there. So during the design work, you do have to talk about perspective because in that perspective, you gotta understand that the foreground, the middle ground, the background live in different places on a, on a piece of paper, so they need to understand that they need to illustrate that. And by illustrating that on paper from Once Upon a Time or going over or just going over what's going on in that story, uh, that's starting to lead in that lettering into the storytelling unit, and then we're gonna finish that up with paper cutting, cutting out different sections of, of scenery to where you're, you're building a three-dimensional scene, uh, which also works towards uh, tunnel books, if anybody's done that. Uh, and they're gonna come back to their their books that they built initially. They're gonna do out, you guys are gonna be completing a design uh, over the front, the spine, and the back is just colored in just so that it's got cohesiveness. You're not really doing anything back here. Uh, but you're creating that element to where it looks like a finished piece of story, literature, book, art. Kind of like the never ending story. Finally, finishing up your storyboard piece by finishing up those uh, designs on the, in the papers themselves. And that wraps up. Um, those units uh, that wraps up surface design if at all you guys have questions toss them down in the comments below as always i look forward to hearing from my class my students to see if you guys have uh any tips for me or things that you don't think that i cover that i need to cover uh, i always look forward to hearing from my class until then i will see you guys later the battery's yelling at me so see you guys